are here today with Stuart Duncan in the world famous Station Inn. Uh, this is the Station Inn Green Room, which is actually the owner JT's office. Uh, Stuart here is a A-list Nashville session player. He's played fiddle with people such as George Strait, uh, Reba McIntyre, Dolly Parton, and even Barbara Streisand. One time, yes, mm -hmm. even Barbara Streisand. And you're also a member of the Grammy award-winning band, uh, the Nashville Bluegrass Band. That's right. I've been playing here at the Station Inn with the Nashville Bluegrass Band for 26 years almost now. Wow. Well, Stuart, tell us how you got started playing. I grew up in Southern California, and uh, back in, uh, in the early 70s, there was a, a huge folk music scene mm -hmm. there, left over from the 60s, and, and so I, I had a combination of influences from that world and there was a thriving bluegrass festival scene starting in about 1971 there. And Bill Monroe would come and Don Reno would come out, Jimmy Martin came out, Lester Flatt, Ralph Stanley. And uh, they all came out to play at this festival that would happen mm -hmm. once a year. And so they, you know, the, the rest of the year was spent looking forward to the, those weekends of course. doing that. And then finally I got to come east with my father when I was 12 years old and and then again when I was 14 and do the whole festival circuit of the East Coast from there and kind of honed my craft in the bluegrass world that way. And so I, I, um, I started playing a um, more progressive style of bluegrass in California with a banjo player named Allison Brown. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a record together, and toured together, and then we both went to school and didn't see each other for a few years. And, now she lives here again, so we're talking about, you know, 30 years later, possibly doing another record. So we'll see. Stuart, you have played on so many sessions. Tell us about some of the more interesting ones. Uh, well, the, I think maybe the, the sessions that, that uh, for artists like George Strait or Alan Jackson that I've done are more high profile as far as people have heard of right, those guys. Of right? And uh, the, the coolest thing about George, George Strait's sessions is that um, people maybe have a perception that it takes months to do a record that big that's, mm -hmm. that goes number one no matter what he does, right. you know. And actually, we do all those songs in about four or five days. Wow. You're gonna need to edit. Maybe some artists that are lesser known in the bluegrass world, I think maybe my best work has been with uh, um, artists like uh, Chris Thiele, mm -hmm. who did a solo record a few years back that I played on. He was with the band called the Punch Brothers now. Uh, and also w earlier than that, I worked with Bela Fleck on a lot of his records, mm. the more bluegrass sounding records that he's done. And that was very fun to, to work with artists like that are great composers too, like that. Recently I did uh, a record uh, with uh, the producer Fred Mullen for Jimmy Webb, mm. who is an incredible songwriter that wrote most of the early big hits for Glenn Campbell mm -hmm. by the time I get to Phoenix. And uh, just a, a star-studded cast of guests on that record, and I'm just thrilled to be a part of that. And the same producer produced an album on Johnny Mathis. Oh, wow. I never thought I'd play on really? a Johnny Mathis record, but it happened. The Nashville Bluegrass Man. Tell us 
the latest news of the Nashville Bluegrass Band. The latest thing that we did was just play Merle Fest in North Carolina with mm -hmm. the great Doc Watson. And every year we've, we've been there since the festival started wow. in the late 80s. And every Sunday morning we, we get to play an incredible set of gospel music with Doc. Um, he's, I, I guess, 88 years old. If that's, I might be wrong about that. I think he's 88 and still playing just great. He did some stuff that, that sent me over the edge this weekend. It was great. And uh, we're gearing up for another record. We're working on new tunes. This time of year, it's mostly rehearsal time mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Stuart, in your own words, could you describe to us the difference between a country music fiddle and bluegrass fiddle? Hmm. It would be easier for me to to name players, and then everyone can go out and buy their records and oh. discover the difference okay. themselves. But but uh, you know, I, I think that um, what people think of as bluegrass fiddling is a little bit more aggressive mm -hmm. than what you hear on country radio. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit more rooted in playing uh, double stops, which are playing two notes at a time right. and making chords out of that. And, you know, of course, bluegrass is, has a reputation of being more up-tempo. That's not the only mm -hmm. facet of it, but mm -hmm. that's the most immediate one, you know, sawing the strings. And uh, you know, Tommy Jackson was the most famous country fiddler of the 50s and 60s. And he had a much more almost classical kind of vibrato and smoother style. A lot of single note mm -hmm. things, and but you know if, if the further you back go back into excuse me the further you go back in time, the more they sound the same. Like a lot of the country fiddlers of the '40s sound very much like the bluegrass fiddlers. Mm -hmm. Stuart, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. And oh, thank, thank you. you, JT, and the Station Inn for allowing us to be here today. Thank you. Thank you.